So I've been looking forward to this all year. The Winter Summit is here where we're gonna learn probably most of the important things that are coming in 2024. Some things we already know about, but also tons of new content is gonna get revealed today. Fingers crossed, I'm super excited. Let's get into it. Now, before we jump into the major reveals, they do touch on a few things that are coming really soon. Coming next week, January 24th, is gonna be the new rat boss, Scurrious. This entry level boss is gonna be somewhat of a jumping off point for new players to increase their knowledge of overhead prayers, dodging skills, and other important PVM mechanics. Unlike most bosses, the main reward for this is going to actually be experience. They haven't revealed the XP rates yet, but it is planned to be the most effective way to train melee right up until the year to the end game. The drops are mostly going to be rat bone weaponry, one for each combat style, which is going to be used to kill the boss itself, and of course a pet. The week after that is going to be the combat achievements for Desert Treasure 2, which we are finally going to be getting. That's what you can expect in the next two weeks. This one's not coming as a surprise, but, but the first major reveal is the Varlamore area expansion, which is coming March 20th of 2024. To be specific, this is going to be the first batch from the Varlamore update. It's going to be coming in multiple different batches, mainly because this is such a big update. Varlamore is going to be housing tons of new content, including, including the city of Civitas Fortis, a new hunter guild, the new wave-based PVM minigame, the Colosseum, the Perilous Moons dungeon, as well as much, much more. This is going to be possibly the biggest area expansion Old Scroonscape has ever seen, except for, of course, Zaya. Varlamore is going to be a much warmer continent, everything's going to be brighter, and takes inspiration from ancient Rome and other Middle Age inspiration. To transport it around the map, you're going to be using these Quetzals, which is a real bird, and they're even going to have a new dog to pet. Now, the start was probably the biggest update, the Colosseum. We already know a fair bit about it, but now we actually get a first look at some of the visuals. The Colosseum is going to be a solo-only, wave-based minigame, similar to the Inferno or the Fire Cape. You can take it on in a mid-level setup, but you probably won't make it past the first few waves, and most likely you're going to need end-game gear to make it as far as possible. You're going to be killing things like manticores, minotaurs, the colossi, and even a final boss which is going to be watching you the whole time. The way this kind of distinguishes itself from things like the Inferno is the time to complete each run is going to be much shorter, maybe only 20 to 30 minutes, and less of an investment. Players are going to have a lot of agency and when they decide to leave you can leave with all of your loot at any point or you can push on further to get even more rewards. They've revealed a lot of the new rewards and most of those are going to be appealing to end game players but they do have some things for early game players as well such as new farming patch unlocks, bank unlocks and more. Now the Hunter Guild and Perilous Moons have also already been revealed and they didn't really talk about them too much but we do get a first look at the bosses and the visuals and they do look quite compelling just from a visual standpoint. I'm incredibly excited for Varlamore and it comes out in exactly two months so pretty soon all things considered. So the next major thing we're getting in 2024 is going to be an official Old School RuneScape HD update. Now I thought I was pretty happy with RuneLight's HD version 117. And just to get this out of the way now, all clients are still going to be allowed even after the official HD version is released. But what Jagex is working on is also incredibly exciting. They're completely going to be revamping the renderer with a new feature called RuneTech. And that's going to allow them to build a very good looking HD client from the ground up. Now similar to the RuneLight HD, they're not going to be adding in new brand new models or anything. It's just going to be building up a ton of HD features onto the existing artwork, which is personally the style I like the most. They're going to add in things like dynamic lighting, volumetric lighting, fog, and probably the thing I'm actually the most excited about, HD water, which looks absolutely amazing. Oh my god kind of beautiful already, but we're going to be getting an alpha to try it out ourselves, theoretically, pretty soon. Now to be able to run this, you're going to have to be using an official Jagex client. So either the Steam client, one through the launcher, or mobile, which means you're not going to be able to use RuneLight and the official HD setting at the same time, which, which means to be able to play this, you're not going to have access to all the bank of RuneLight features that are currently available. So we'll have to see how many of those features Jagex can get into their client before an official release, but it does look amazing. So Varlamore Part 1 is pretty fleshed out. We know most of the things are coming with it, or at least the big beats of it. But what about Batch number 2? Well, Varlamore Batch 2 is going to be coming in summer of 2024, 
and they have revealed a few pieces of content that are going to be coming with this update, such as the island of Alderan, which is going to be a Mediterranean style island that's going to be involved in a murder mystery quest. On top of that, they're looking to introduce a new Herblore training method that is going to revolve around the island. This activity will be introducing new Herblore items and content specifically for 70 plus. This most likely will not be the best experience, but they really want to add in an actual reason for especially main accounts to train Herblore. So we'll have to see how they can incentivize players to do that instead of just bank standing for 40 hours to get 99. The second major thing they've revealed is going to be the Hellstorm Mountains, where they're going to be introducing a new group boss. They revealed pretty much no information about the boss itself, except they're not going to be going with a humanoid design. It's going to be something more of like a monster. And it's also going to be encountered in the overworld, something that you could kind of encounter naturally and could even be in a populated area, instead of being underground, in a cavern, or a specific boss chamber. So it's going to be a while until we get Varlamar Part 2, but Part 2 is coming Summer 2024. Part 3, we know there is going to be a third batch. No release date yet, but sometime after Batch 2, because that's how numbers work. Next up here, we have Saline. We know a bit about Saline so far, and the first thing we're going to get out of the way, there is no hard and fast release date for Saline as of yet. Saline is the biggest project the old school team has probably ever worked on, and it's going to be hard to find the right balance of content to be done for release. If they wanted to keep developing the skill until they added everything they want into it, it could be years until Saline is done. But there are some base features that are already done, such as adding in a level up system, max cape functionality, a skilling guide. You're able to trim the sails and sail around in a rudimentary way. Ships will move at different speeds if you trim it, and you're even able to board other players' ships. Now, they've somewhat established that levels 1 through 50 in the early game, you're going to be focused around ports like Port Sarim, Cathary, and Port Kazard. 50 to 80 in the mid-game, you're going to be unlocking large ships, be able to flesh out your own crew, and unlock a ton of the secondary training methods, those being like island exploration, combo training methods, and integrating it into other skills. From 80 to 99 in the end game, you're going to unlock Colossal Vessels, and there's going to be a large amount of meaningful unlocks between these levels because, as everyone knows, these levels are incredibly slow, so they want to jam-packed the end game in particular with interesting content. Now, so far, there's planned to be three sailing betas. One is going to be a technical alpha, which is going to be coming out sometime in Q2 of this year, so sometime May onwards, which will allow us to get our hands on sailing for the first time. There will be a second open beta, which will encompass most of the content that's coming out at release, and will be very close to the actual launch date. Besides that, they didn't actually talk about too much of the actual new content that's going to be coming with Sailing that's still being developed, but if you want to get involved, there is a community contest that's going to be happening this year. For community designs of the Sailing skill icon, the Sailing cape, and even to design your own islands which could make it into the Sailing skill. Pretty cool. Such a pathetic concept. Power, that is all that matters. The power to claim what is rightfully mine. That's right guys, in 2024 we are getting Wild Gothic Sleeps. Summer of 2024. This iconic Grandmaster quest is probably one of the most well known from the 2008 era. This quest originally introduced Tormented Demons and the Dragon Claws. Now because the mechanics for Tormented Demons were already kind of used for Demonic Gorillas and Dragon Claws are obviously already dropped from the Chambers of Zarek, they're looking to add in new mechanics and new drops for this questline, alongside updating the quest for modern standards. Now I'm really excited to say that they're actually going to be introducing something called the Rites of Balance, which is going to be a god alignment system for your prayer book. Now, as many of you know, the Ruinous Powers were actually shelved this year, but they said they would come back to them and this is the time. God Alignment started as a community suggestion, and it kind of works like this. Instead of getting a brand new prayer book, an alignment is going to be part of your main prayer book, but with a few extra prayers you can get from aligning to a specific god. So while Guthix Sleeps is going to be introducing the Guthix Alignment, or the Rites of Balance, this also means you're going to be getting the Zerishian Alignment from Desert Treasure 2, which is going to be introduced as an additional reward. 
and they're not just introducing one quest, we're also going to be getting the Defender of Varrock, which will also be released this summer. So anyway guys, that's going to be all the big projects coming in 2024. At the end, we have the full roadmap reveal. January 24th, we're getting Scurious, the Rat King. Spring of 2024, we're getting the Defender of Varrock. Also, a wilderness update, which we didn't talk about at all because I'm just not my area of expertise. I would just recommend checking out the blog. The Varlamore Part 1 area expansion is coming March 20th, 2024, into a Dead Man mode tournament. No, I don't think we're getting a league this year, but but a rerun of Dead Man Apocalypse is what it looks like to me. Summer of 2024, we're getting the Wild Gothic Sleeps and the Varlamore Part 2 expansion. And that's going to be it for the roadmap reveal. I hope you guys are excited. I'm quite excited for the content this year and it's coming up really soon. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.